watching the Shan and Tamara show. And today we're looking at two things because we have a, had a little bit of a mess up last week. We're looking at student activism as well as intergenerational dialogues. So we need to define our terms first of all for any of you who might be a little bit new to the ideas. First of all, what is student activism while it's kind of self-explanatory? What, what does it mean to you? Yeah. Okay. Well, student activism to me is basically taking a stand as a student or forming groups and uh, standing up for what you believe in, raising some of the issues that you feel passionate about and trying to get also other students involved in these activities, uh, activi sorry, activities that you plan to carry out. And it's all about sharing of information and awareness and the whole advocacy stuff and letting other students know. Okay, so there's that. And then the other thing that we're looking at today is intergenerational dialogues. Now, intergenerational dialogues, while also kind of self-explanatory, what it basically means is you're bringing in people from different experiences as well as from the basic different sort of age groups to share experiences and knowledge of, of usually about a, s a specific topic. So it's, it's a lot about ha establishing a platform so that there are people who are, are sharing in a meaningful way, and it's not just about the younger people listening to the older people or vice versa. It is about that sort of give and take experience where you are learning from each other and that's basically what you know we feel university is supposed to be. Yes, and it's also about keeping that open mind and that when you're going into that space, it's about not just voicing your opinion and having to say, this is what I want, so I'm just gonna stick with it. It's about just yes, standing your ground and like you have mentioned earlier on before the show, sustainability. Mm -hmm. So you, it's a lot, I mean, it is natural and okay if you, s if you stick to your own standards, but it's also about accepting others' opinion mm -hmm. and working with them and also not just dialoguing, but also having to make sure that you take action after yeah. talking about the issues and other um, stuff that you talk about. Okay, so we're looking at student activism first. Now, I think it's kind of important that we do bring ourselves to this because, you know, we, we are both students at the University of the South yeah. Pacific, and we have had some sort of experiences with the idea of student activism. Now, most of it has been a little bit, let's just say not positive, um, <laughs> but, you know, which, which is the truth, and, and it's really important because it is a learning experience as well, particularly when you're trying to start something. Now, Tamara, what, what, what kind of experiences have you had, particularly around student activism on campus? Um, well, honestly, experience-wise, um, challenging. <laughs> Tell me with a heavy heart. <laughs> um, yeah, it was really challenging in terms of, I mean, like, having to be accepted. Um, and this was just trying to set up a women's association. And this women's association, the funny thing was, I didn't understand was that it was already an affiliate, but then because it was dead for the past couple of years, no one revived it. So we decided just to revive it, but then we were given a no-no. Um, yeah, so I think it depends also on those at the student association. Like, I guess they weren't really familiar with what we were trying to do. And even though we had provided them with the information and rundown of everything that we were trying to do, um, I guess they just sort of just shut down and they don't want that. Um, yeah, so it's about those kind of like miscommunication and all this stuff. And then having to know that, I think, I guess they were really intimidated by having like a women's group because then they told us there's a women's group and they have to be a men's group and then yeah. so, so. And yeah, so they didn't really get the idea that this women's group are only for those who are interested. Mm -hmm. Doesn't necessarily mean that all the women in USP yeah. have to be forced to be into the women's group. But no, it's like for those who want to and who are interested in this sort of um, like association. And the other challenge was getting members. I mean like getting the numbers was not a challenge, but then the thing was having to identify those who are really passionate about mm -hmm. doing this, this sort of work and those who are just there for the sake of being there just to add on colors to the CV. Yes, it wasn't a really good experience. I think the first thing that you mentioned, the sort of ideas around the people who you who you have to work with uh, the the student association, yeah. the like the the men the main office that looks after all the different mm -hmm. student associations, those people who don't really recognize the kinds of ideas that you know what's your association about, 
because at USB it's either ethnic ethnic groups or your religious groups or your you know uh, school groups because you know it's like oh we're the the math school of maths or we're the school of language and we, we you know that or this is our major and, and something to have an idea of an organization on campus affiliated with you know USPSA they didn't really get or have really the sort of um, policies in place to allow these kinds of things, which is why it was so difficult, even for the Dronjalangi movement, which is currently an LGBTIQ student uh, network, uh, support network. You know, um, being a straight supporter and, and d generally identifying as queer, you know, y you find it really difficult for people to, one, accept what you're trying to do because they, they're, they're so, not closed-minded, but they're so comfortable in what they think they know and, and, and trying to get people to do that amongst all their assignments and amongst their stress and amongst, you know, just they're basically drinking and partying and stuff because, you know, to them that's what student life is. But to us, you know, we want it to be a place where we're taking something away, where we're taking our experiences away and where, where we are learning in a way that it's, it is learning about the world because these are things that, you know, impact upon the world. These are the kinds of things that might not necessarily be part of, you know, our, our politics here at home, but it's part of politics everywhere else, and politics uh, affects all our lives all, all the time. Yeah. Because issues and everything else, those are what we want our groups to represent us for, but the, they don't really have those kinds of spaces anymore, and that, that's kind of disappointing. And similarly, when it comes into generational dialogue, you know, that's the kind of thing that, you know, our, our university experiences are based upon. Because you come to university and you're not necessarily expected to know everything, mm -hmm. but you're also supposed to be facilitated in your learning experience as opposed to I'm your teacher and you are my student. Exactly. Yeah, I think that's a deal. And uh, also, like, when they teach, eh, I think it's important to not only teach from what's in the textbook, but also to teach what's outside of the textbook so that we also prepare the student for what's really out there. Mm -hmm. Then basically just this is the reading that's all just stop right there so it's also about I mean like they should be able to share more information with the student like hey go this this other research that's taking place and blah 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 you can go and look there if this is your field of interest rather than just coming to teach what's in the textbook and then that's it yeah. so it's I mean like if you want to really have the intergenerational dialogue it's also important to share more information information that you feel might be important to the student but it's not in the textbook you should just go ahead share it because it I mean it relates to everyday life I at some point it does and you know that that that's really it is committing to the process of having these kinds of intergenerational dialogues which is why it probably doesn't happen very often because you need to be connected to this sort of platform and that the, the current platform that we're talking about right now is the University of the South Pacific and you know it's it's quite a large university for for you know the Pacific and there are lots of people and there are lots of really tired strung out tutors and quite a few tired people and everything else and you're just trying to make sure that they get their grades out and they get their assignments marked and everything but you know, when it comes to, n but particularly, I guess, in the arts that were you had psychology and myself in politics and journalism, and even with social work. I mean, it's it's about dealing with people, and it's about, you know, it's 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 something that keeps changing, because there's so much happening with it as as general areas. So you know, it's it is about a learning experience because your tutor can't know everything about this topic, particularly because the fact that things keep changing and and because. You know, they, they they might be scholars and they might have all these degrees, but they have to admit that they are still learning and, yeah. and, and, and in our sort of expanding, globalizing world, so many different things are becoming relevant, mm -hmm. you know, that might not have been relevant before. So, you know, it's interesting and it's really difficult, I think. I think it's really difficult to try and get a lot of older people to take younger people seriously, mm -hmm. but also to take them into account, first of all, is really difficult because I, I heard that generally at, at, at the more youth, because it, it is youth month and it was International Day of Youth a, a couple of weeks ago, I yeah, think. August 12th. And, and um, apparently there was a significant lack of young people celebrating the day. Mm -hmm. It was, it was, and yeah, there was really a lack, lack of youth celebrating August, I mean on August 12th. Um, I guess because it was Sunday, but then they had celebrations prior to that. So, but it was really somewhat disappointing how like there was really lack of youth. Um, I guess that's where also the importance of student activism in uni life is really important because I mean at uni there's hardly a barely anything going on, 
If there were to be activities happening in USP, it will be organized by other youth groups outside USP. And that's like really disappointing because you would want students in the yeah. USP uh, complex to come up with their activities and invite other youth organizations to come and be in the host. So that's like really sad. And yes, like tutors and teachers can also play a role in that. I mean, like they can come up with ideas. I mean, if they initiate it, and then obviously the student association, um, the ho big uh, USB student association would agree with that because then they'll see that the teachers behind it. I guess that's one of the things why they don't really normally affiliate groups who come up with activism stuff and stuff. Maybe because they don't see other teachers like going in that direction, so maybe they have mindset. Yeah, and then it depends on their mindset and their uh, level of understanding. And their experiences do as well, yeah. So that's like a lot to work in. <laughs> so it's all really difficult, but I guess it still needs to get done. Yes. Okay, so I guess that's all our show for today. Uh, stay tuned because next month we're going to be uh, celebrating the International Day of Peace as well as Rural Women's Day. So we'll have quite a bit from our, our networks um, culminating as, as parts yeah. of the show. So thank you very much. I'm Sean. And I'm Tamara. And, and this is our show. <laughs>